Amen. Our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in order to bring the kingdom of the love of the Sacred Heart to the world. The charity had, gone, had grown cold, and our Lord came to this humble handmaid, this humble religious sister of the visitation, to enkindle in the world once again love of God. For over and over again, when our Lord was asked, what is the greatest commandment, he told them, love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. As we commemorate this first Friday, where we give our acts of reparation to the Sacred Heart which so loves men and has loved so little in return, and even hated by those who have a special obligation to love Him, namely Christians, religious, and priests, we ought to reflect and examine ourselves on the one thing that gets in the way of that kingdom of the love of the Sacred Heart to be founded in our hearts, to be established in our hearts. Like most things in the spiritual life, the biggest obstacle doesn't look that big. We often overlook it to our own detriment. One of the biggest obstacles to our Lord, allowing our Lord to establish the kingdom of the Sacred Heart in our hearts is our refusal to accept and embrace His plan for us in the present moment. We refuse to accept and embrace His plan for us in the present moment. We have better ideas. We think we know better. How could this possibly work to my good? But remember, the inspired and errant word of God tells us in Romans chapter 8, all things work unto the good for those who love God. If we wish to have the Sacred Heart as the king and center of our hearts, as we'll pray in the litany of the Sacred Heart after Mass, we have to accept His plan on His terms in our life today, in our life in the present moment. Too often we look around for things to be better or to be different. If only things weren't so, I would become a saint. If only things were different, I could be holy. If only things were the way I think they should be, then, then I could love God. But I have to deal with this person at work. I have to deal with my spouse or my children. The church is a wreck. On and on and on. You're refusing the plan of Christ's kingdom in your own lives by that attitude. What must we do instead? We must pause especially in times of difficulty, especially when things go contrary to the way we think they ought to be. To pause, to take a step back and reflect and recall those words of St. Paul. 
All things work unto the good for those who love God. Even this situation. And then we should ask ourselves, Lord, what are you trying to teach me today? What virtue do you want me to practice here and now? How are you asking me to love you right now? How are you asking me to make reparation to your sacred heart right now? And more often than not, our Lord Jesus Christ is not looking for anything more than a complete surrender to Him. Lord, I give all of this to you. I don't have the strength or the wherewithal to even begin addressing this problem. I can't carry this cross. I've tried. And it's crushing me. Only you can help me. I submit. I surrender. You do it through me because I can't do it. This is just another way of accepting what Jesus told us at the Last Supper. Without me, you can do nothing. Our Lord loves us so much that there's no detail in your life. There's no event that is too insignificant, that is too humdrum, that he does not want to share with you. But you have to invite him. You have to invite him. And it begins by seeing that event in your daily life as coming from his hand. As an invitation Come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Those trials, those difficulties, those especially those ones which push us to our limits, our invitations, our repetition of what our Lord says today in the Alleluia verse. Come to me. All you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest to your souls. So let us take him up on his offer, especially in the trials that we face. Because that is where our Lord is closest to us, in the cross. And there is where we will share in his great love for us. For it was on the cross, after all, where he showed that great love for us. But we will never receive that love of the cross unless we accept and surrender to our Lord when he sends us just a splinter from his cross. The choice is really ours. It's in these little things. Will we submit to our Lord and His plan? Or will we try to do it our own way? Will we see the trials and crosses not as a punishment, but as an opportunity to invite our Lord into it, to rely upon His strength, and to allow Him to bring us that peace of soul, to bring that rest to our souls, which He promises. The crosses are heavy enough as they are. Don't make them even more heavy by refusing the help our Lord offers you, by refusing to accept the cross from His hands and refusing to carry it with him and through him. Acceptance of his plan, acceptance of his kingdom, 
in the current circumstances you find yourself in. For rather than being an obstacle to your sanctification, they're the stepping stones towards it. If only you accept it as coming from his hands and believe with your whole heart those words of St. Paul, all things without exception work unto the good for those who love God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.